Hi, thanks for joining me. And in this session of Tiny Tutorials, we're going to talk about Google Sites. Google Sites is a free service through Google Apps for Education and for free Google users that allows you to create a web page. And what's great about Google Sites for teachers is that you can use it as a teacher page or you can use it as a blog or a place to post assignments if you don't want to use Google Classroom, for instance. So the first thing you'll need to do is go to sites.google.com and make sure that you're logged into your district Google Apps for Education account. And here you can see I've already created a couple of sites, but I'm going to create a new one and just walk through a couple of basic steps that you'll need to know to get started. First of all, I'm going to click the Create button over here at the left and the first thing it's going to ask you is to name your site now just above this though it has a spot where you can choose a template I suggest that you start with a blank template because they're easier to use they, the, the gallery templates that are available are a little bit difficult if you're a first time user uh, to mess with so it's best to just stick with the blank template and then you can change the colors and the themes later on but to get started let's go ahead and name our site I'm going to name this uh, fake site so that I can delete it later. You'll notice that whenever I enter the name for my site it automatically fills it in down here under my site location. This is the URL address where my site will be found later on and if you're a Google Apps for Education user you'll also notice that your domain will show up in the URL address. Then after I'm finished all I have to do is click create and it goes through the steps of creating my site. And it's pretty simple to do. Now here you can see it's very basic looking, it's just a plain white background and you can see my school logo at the top left. Uh, I may not want that to show up there, I might want it to be just branded a little bit differently, say for instance if I'm an English teacher or a biology teacher, I might want to use the artwork from my textbook. So I'm going to walk you through some of the basic steps on how to do that. But to get started, if I wanted to edit this page, this is my home page, so if I wanted to edit this page, just go up to the top and click on this pencil and I can edit the page. You'll notice some basic formatting tools will show up here at the top at the top of the page. And I can from here I can insert uh, images or links or a table of contents. I can also add some gadgets if I want to add a text box. Um, and I can also add some various Google items, like if I wanted to add a document from my drive, I could do that, or if I wanted to add a Google group to this page or a YouTube video I could do that and it's they've made it very simple so that you can get to all those things being that it's an apps for education tool you can get into and access any of your documents with your Google Apps for Education account uh, up here at the top you also have the basic formatting menu as you type words on the page uh, you can highlight a word and then you can change the formatting so it shows up as heading one two three or four um, and you also have some alignment tools. You can insert a table. Tables are very handy if you want to add multiple types of content to the page and you want everything to show up in neat columns. And then you also have um, layout features here as well. If you don't want to use a table, you could use like a three column layout where you can place your items on the page as you can see here. So I'm going to delete some of this and we'll add a little bit of editing and we'll see what that looks like. And here I've added a couple of little headers to each of those columns. I'm going to change up some of this information so it looks a little bit nicer. And that gives us a little bit of content to work with. So once you're finished editing your page, if you want to add anything, just make sure that you click save when you're finished and then it will reload the page with your changes on the page. Now, like I said, there's some other formatting that you can do to this to remove the icon at the top. So let's take a look at how to do that. Anytime you want to make edits to your site other than what you're doing here with the edit page feature, you want to go to the more actions menu. From here, if I click on edit site layout, I'm going to show you a couple of features that just make your life a little bit easier. Now, first of all, your site typically comes set up so that it's got a sidebar. I typically turn off the sidebar and what I'll do is I will weave a header at the top of the page. Now right now the way the header is I don't have any extra pages in my site. I'm going to add some pages to the site in just a minute and I'm going to show you how you can fill that with some buttons that allow your users to navigate around your site a little bit more easily. But from here 
on the edit site layout page if I click in the site header it gives me a couple of options I can choose to use a custom logo and instead of my domain logo and I can choose a file and upload that if I want to I'm going to just choose something really quick that to make it quick and easy and give you an idea of what that looks like so I'm going to hit choose file and I'm going to go to my pictures and I'll just grab um, a little logo here uh, to give you an idea and then it it asks me you know is this the logo you want yes that's the one I want and I'm going to change this up here so that it uses logo sizing for it and then I click OK and it replaces the original logo with the new one I've given and then of course now that I'm finished all I have to do is go up to the top and click close now like I said all I have right now is my home page uh, maybe for instance I don't want to have a single web page view with homework quizzes and projects maybe I want to make those separate pages so if I want to add a page all I have to do is go up to the top and click create page and I'll name my page I'm going to name this one homework and click create and I want to leave that at the top level as it showed there and then I'm going to click save and I'm going to go back and add another page called projects and again I want to leave that at the top level okay and I'm going to click and then I'll save it and then I'm going to add another one called quizzes and save that one as well and then I'm going to add one that's called announcements now for this one I'm going to make this one different because you actually have some templates that you can choose from here instead of a web page I'm going to choose an announcements page and what that does is it allows you to put posts on the page that your students can read you don't have to sign in and then edit a page you just have to be signed into your site and then you can click new post and only you and any other teacher that you share your site with can add posts to the page your students cannot and so it just makes it easy to communicate with your students you just jump on your site make sure you're logged in and click a post for announcing assignments or any other classroom announcements for your students to read later I'll show you what that looks like okay so here is our announcements page notice that like the other pages it took me to the page but it didn't automatically go into edit mode it just took me to the page and here I have a new post button so from here I could click new post and add a titled post welcome to the class and I'll leave a little message here and then I'll click save and then that post will show up on the announcements page and if I click back here on announcements it'll show all the posts that are currently on that page now from here you're looking around and there's no way back to the site unless you go back up here and click back to my sites and then it takes me back to my Google Sites page now we don't want that we want a couple of menu buttons at the top of our site so that we can see how to navigate between the home page and the other pages so I'm going to show you how to get back into that we're going to go back to more actions and hit edit site layout now you remember I created several pages but we don't have any navigation up here that allows us to get to those I'm going to change this so it says horizontal navigation instead of a sidebar like we had earlier and now we see a little home button here and if I click in this area I can edit this navigation bar and from here I'm going to add all of those other pages that I created so I just click add page and I'm going to click on announcements and OK and then just do the same for each of the other pages that I created now these will all show up as buttons at the header of the page and it reloads the page and now I have it the way I want it and I can click close And so that's allowing our website to take on a little bit more of a usable interface and now it's easy for us to jump from the home page to the announcements page and through the other pages as well now of course now that I have a page for each of these other things I'm going to go back and edit the page and I'm going to take out this layout leave it as a one column and get rid of these items 
The next thing that you might want to do is add a little bit of color to your site. So I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to click on Manage Site. And from here, I'm going to go to the Themes, Colors, and Fonts page. Now, from here, you have some, you're on a base theme, which is just a plain white background. And if you click this menu, you can change and look around through some of these other items, and it will reload your view so that you can see what it looks like before you decide to stick with, uh, to stick with a theme. So I'm going to just take a little bit of time here and add, yeah, this one looks good. Let's just stick with this one. I'll click Save. And then from here, I can go back to my website by clicking on it, and here we go. Now, our page again, starting to take on a little bit more of, a, of, of an appealing appearance now. Now, one of the last things that I'm going to show you, which is going to be helpful, is sharing responsibilities. Now, right now, I'm the only one that can access this page. My students can go to it and view it, but I'm the only one that can edit the page. I can go here and I can click announcements, I can add a new post, but I'm the only one. But what if I have a co-teacher? Or what if I have a department where I want to share multiple items with that department and I want to be able to communicate with those people? So from here, if I want to share my site with other teachers, all I have to do is go up at the top right and click share. Now from here, it's going to load the site management page where I can invite other people by email address. So all I have to do to set that up is type in their email address and as long as they're on the same domain as me in the same district domain then they can share this site and they can edit if they want if I want them to or maybe it's just something where I want them to view it but still have access to it every time they log into Google Sites but I'm gonna leave it so that they can edit and then when I'm done I just hit send and it sends them a message that I've shared rights to this website with them now what can you do once you've shared rights to a website with another teacher? Well, the great thing about having a Google site is that if you add a page such as a file cabinet, then the other teachers in your group can add files as they want and you don't have to worry about sending emails or sharing through Google Drive. You can just add files to the website and then access them anytime you need to in class. So I'm going to call this um, file sharing and I'll hit create. And so now I have a file cabinet page where any teacher like myself that has editing rights to this site can add a file, a link, or add anything from their Google Drive and then create a folder system on the page so that we can all get to it at any time that we want. We can also leave comments at the bottom for one another. So this is a great way to share district or departmental resources without having to do the whole paper shuffle, making copies, or sharing things through email or through Google Drive. It's just all right here on this shared web page that we've created for our department. Well, hopefully that gives you a little bit to work with as far as Google Sites and at least getting you started. And if you have any questions at any time, please let me know. And thanks for joining me.